wisdom, prudentia, justice, justicia, temperance, temperantia, courage, fortitudo. Applying ancient philosophy to modern life, this is the Sunday Stoic. From the patron-supported Stoic Studios in Conway, Arkansas, this is the Sunday Stoic. Hey everybody, the uh, music you're hearing right now from one of my listeners, uh, DG Oriodont, I believe is his username, on uh, Discord, someone I chat with occasionally, and uh, he gave me permission to put this on here, thought you'd like it. Uh, if he uh, wants to share more music with you, I'll, I'll provide a link in a uh, future episode. Last week, we spent some time talking about Cicero and Cato. I had a huge block of text that I read, and it took me several hours to get it all ready and up, and uh, this week we're going to take a different approach. Why? Because I don't want to put you to sleep every week, and it's really pretty outside, and I don't want to be inside for long. Uh, I'm still on summer break as a teacher, and uh, I don't have to be in an office, and I don't want to be in front of this computer for too long. So seize the day, carpe diem, right? So this week, rather than reading from a block of text, we're we're going to uh, uh, summarize in point form. This is very modern, like you'd see in a uh, magazine. The top ten points that I got from reading (laughs) Cicero's On the Ends of Good and Evil. So that's what I'm going to do this week, is give you the top ten points that I got from reading, uh, reading that text. And I highly recommend that you read it yourself. I like to summarize things. I like to give you chunks of text because... I feel like if we only quote mine, you know, just pick individual lines, you don't get a feel for the overall position of the Stoics. You get little snippets. It's not necessarily the most elegant way to learn the philosophy. It's useful and you can memorize different aspects and take them with you, but it's a good idea to hear it in context as well. Uh, But we can't do that every week, right? Uh, Especially when the writing's a little archaic and uh, I need to keep you know, listener attention for a few minutes, so I don't want to bore you again. So last time we talked a little bit about their discussion. So Cicero, who is uh, a politician, and Cato, another politician, uh, but Cato being a Stoic, uh, run into each other in a friend's library, and they start talking philosophy. And Cato uh, wants to summarize the philosophy of Zeno. And so we talked a bit about how uh, the major point that he makes is that the true good is your own moral character. And externals can have value, but they never amount to the same as good. So good is the, is the best thing you can have, your moral character. And other things like wealth, family, friends, etc. have various values, but but they could never equal that of the good. So that's where we left off last time. So this week, I'm going to kind of reiterate that and just give you a top 10 list of my take-home points from from this work. But before we do that, I just want to thank my patrons, uh, especially Jed, my newest patron. Thank you for supporting the show. And I think I mentioned this last time, but keep your eyes open. Um, I may have some... Uh, a reward for patrons coming soon a in the form of like a, a challenge coin, uh, which I may also make available for purchase uh, in order to offset the cost of having them made. And uh, I'll have a limited quantity of those. Of course, if they're very popular, I could have more produced, but I don't want to uh, order 300 of them and then have 170 of them in my pocket. Uh, that would be heavy and expensive. So keep an eye out for that. And patrons, uh, keep your eye out soon. I'm going to try to uh, 
chat with you on Facebook or something uh, in the next few weeks. So let's try to arrange something there as well. All right. So what are the top take-home points from Cicero's On the Ends of Good and Evil? Number one, virtue is the supreme good. We've heard this from Seneca. We hear it again from Cato. Virtue is the good. Externals are not needed for happiness, but they can have value. So externals are not good. Good is a very special word in Stoicism, a very precise word reserved for virtue and you know your character. But externals can have value and they can be pursued. They need to be pursued, which brings us to number three. Wisdom is the necessary tool for assigning value to externals. Without wisdom, you wouldn't know which externals are worth pursuing. Number four. From birth, humans worry about their own survival, not pleasure. So the argument he makes is that a little baby doesn't know pleasure from pain, but they do want to survive. So they're not pursuing pleasure in the Epicurean sense. They're pursuing their own livelihood, which can then extend into uh, care for themselves and care for others as they mature. Number five, accepting falsehoods as truth is one of the worst things a Stoic can do. So assenting to what is false, to what is not real, is the worst thing that a Stoic can do. So, Your goal as a Stoic is to die believing as many true things as possible and rejecting as many false things as possible and not allowing impressions to upset your balance. Number six, when engaging in any project, the good lies in your effort, not in success or failure of the project. So when you pick something of value to pursue, Remember, that thing itself is not good. The good lies in your decision-making and your effort towards that end. Number seven, to live a good life, it must be conducted in a certain way, not necessarily in the way you might otherwise choose to live. So Cato says there are basic rules you must follow to live a good life. You don't go out and uh, have a bacchanalia, one of my favorite words from Latin class, you know, an orgy of food and drink every night. You don't pursue pleasure uh, every day. You have to choose a rigorous life, uh, a strong life philosophy, which is what we're doing here with Stoicism. You have to pick a life philosophy, and then you have to stick with it. And that philosophy is going to mean you have to sacrifice some things and do things that you might not otherwise have done. You might not have given so much to charity or or helped your neighbor when they asked for help, or you might have uh, had a few more beers on Friday night. But with a philosophy in place, you can live a fulfilling good life. It just might not be the same trajectory you would have taken had you not picked this philosophy. Number eight, the study of nature is a lofty pursuit, regardless of any profit it may bring. I personally like this one because Cato is saying, The study of nature, of course, is important because we can learn how nature works so we can better live, as the Stoics would say, according to nature. Uh, We are part of nature. We shouldn't try to live in such a way that goes against the grain of nature. But just learning more about nature has its own profit in that, or, or its own benefits, I should say, just a lofty knowledge of how the world works. And, and that is worth, it's, it's worth the pursuit. It has value in and of itself. So I liked hearing that a bit from Cato there. Number nine, humans are meant to live together and serve each other like hands and feet work together to make the body whole. We hear this again and again in Stoicism. Cato says it here. Human beings are social animals and we cannot live in isolation. We must work together, serve each other. We have to be part of society, to be a complete and functional human being. Number 10. The wise person would engage in politics and government as well as have a a, a strong family life. So Cato says that naturally, because we're social, we should engage in the world around us, not just sit on our hands, but take part in our society. 
That might mean for you, your role is to be a politician, or it is at least to vote or voice your opinion. Also, he says a Stoic would, he's speaking from the perspective of a man, of course, would take a wife and have children and things like that. It's natural to do these things, and therefore, it's something a Stoic would pursue. So those are the 10 points I got. There are other points there. These are just the ones I highlighted. I recommend you check out the work uh, yourself. Eventually, I'd like to go back and read the next book in which Cicero critiques Stoicism and talks about uh, where he finds it lacking. Uh, I think that would be a worthwhile pursuit in the future. So I thank you for joining me this week. Uh, I hope you'll catch the show next week. And uh, don't forget to email sundaystoic at gmail.com. Any questions or comments or send me an audio clip if you want to appear on the show. Tell me why you're into Stoicism, what Stoicism does for you, your favorite Stoic practices, whatever you want to talk about. Go ahead and do that. Uh, You can support the show by going to patreon.com slash sundaystoic. And until next week, carpe diem. Thank you for listening to The Sunday Stoic. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe, rate, and review The Sunday Stoic on iTunes. Become a member of The Sunday Stoic team, earn rewards, and be an integral part of the show by becoming a patron at www.patreon.com slash sundaystoic. Contact the show by emailing sundaystoic at gmail.com or by leaving a voicemail at 501-503-3132. To find out more, visit www.sundaystoicpodcast.com. And as Steve always says, carpe diem. <laughs>